Welcome to Allegrativity Powercast with Allegra Sinclair. Are you ready to punch fear in the face, show up, and tell your story? Stay tuned for tools to get you unstuck and resources to help you develop your story so you can share it with the world. Here is your host, Allegra Sinclair. Hey, this is Allegra Sinclair. Welcome to the Powercast. The title for today's episode is The Rocks Are Crying Out. You are not who they say you are. While last week I focused on not criticizing yourself, today a recent event has inspired me to focus on not allowing others to criticize you either. In fact, I will take it a step further and suggest that we not let others define us, name us, shame us, limit us, bully us, or act in any way that diminishes who we are destined to be. That's right, it's a pull up those big girl panties kind of day because my alter ego is dangerously close to the surface. You have never met Erica, but she is in here. I'm doing lots of deep breathing this week because I'm angry and heartbroken at the same time. In case you haven't been following the story, let me tell you about a bright young African-American man named Jonathan Martin. I believe he's standing in place for a lot of other people but I have his name, so I'm going to use it today. This particular young man may have lost his professional life last week because he was harassed and abused until he couldn't take it anymore and fled his workplace. He's in a profession where you would hardly expect someone to be bullied and tormented like this, but there's a lesson in that for us also. You can be victimized no matter where you work and what you look like. Nothing gets my warrior princess riled up as quickly as people using their powers for evil. When people who have been gifted with authority choose to abuse and intimidate the vulnerable, it makes my palms itch. You want to see me go from my usual soft-hearted, fun-loving self to Xena in about 3.6 seconds? It's pretty easy. Just have the nerve to take advantage of a young person, an old person, the poor, etc. Forget punching stuff in the throat. It makes me want to hurt people who intentionally inflict damage on others. I make no apologies for that because someone has to speak for those whose voices are being drowned out. But let's get back to Jonathan. Jonathan Martin is on the roster of the Miami Dolphins football team. All the facts are not in, but what we know for sure is that last week, after a protracted period of what he felt was abusive behavior, In an extremely hostile work environment, he snapped and left the facility. Now, initial reports said he had a nervous breakdown, an emotional crisis, something along those lines. And the first word I remember hearing about possible reasons for his behavior was bullying. Now, let me be clear. We all know football is a brutal, macho, physically intimidating sport. I get that. And hello, I like that. However, bullying is a different matter, and so is the alleged racial bigotry he was subjected to. As the words of one voicemail Jonathan received were released to the public, it became obvious that this was not bullying or harmless hazing. These actions were intentional, ugly, racist, cowardly, repugnant, bigoted, and hateful. This situation is front page news because it happened to professional athletes in a glamorous city. But we know the scenario could be playing itself out right now in classrooms, boardrooms, libraries, and thousands of other locations. The fact that nobody stepped in and stopped this is not a situation that's reserved for athletes. You know that, right? Does that give you chills? Because it does me. My heart breaks for this young man. While I happen to believe that him speaking up is incredibly brave, I know that the price he'll likely have to pay for slaying this particular dragon and saving his life and the lives of others may be more than he realizes. Because of the macho sensibilities around sports, especially football, and all that I have heard and observed about the behavior inside male locker rooms, there will be many who will call him soft, start dissing his physical skills, and say he should have kept the dispute in-house. Maybe that's true. And maybe he tried to do that. 
but the fact that it is now being widely reported that he is in therapy trying to regain his health is what should haunt every person involved in this situation. I don't care how macho you are, and Jonathan Martin is over six feet tall and I think weighs around 320 pounds. If grown men are bullying and threatening and tormenting their teammates, there is something so wrong with that that it takes my breath away. Those facts should choke the very breath from the leadership of that organization. I love football. I watch it all the time. I'm loud when I watch it. Things come out of my mouth that you would find it hard to believe. Yes, I have wished ill on good Christian men because they were playing for the wrong team. However, when the game is over, even if my team lost, I can go back to being a reasonable, mature fan of the overall game and recognize the sacrifice that the players made so that I could be entertained. I would never let that emotion go off the field and push me to a place that my circle wouldn't recognize. In this case, I would never be pushed to leave profane, hate-filled, threatening, disparaging voicemail for a brother in arms, one of the 50-plus men I'm supposed to live and die with. That's repugnant and makes me want someone to stop this bully. It doesn't have to be somebody bigger physically, because as I said, Jonathan Martin is an imposing figure, but physical size and power can be two completely different and separate things. I'm troubled by how it got this bad. Allegedly, this foolishness has been going on for about 18 months. Really? Why the hell is that? Are you telling me that nobody in that organization had a clue? The alleged ringleader has a long and checkered past and bells, I mean alarms, should have been ringing all over that organization. And I believe they were. Were they more concerned with winning games than they were with the character of their players? Shocking, right? I think each NFL team is worth, what, $500 billion or something? But were they really less concerned with the quality of the workplace? There's laws about that, folks. I have no inside information. I'm just saying. I'm not foolish enough to think that everybody who plays football is an altar boy and or never makes a mistake. But there must be a line that we can draw to benefit a collective group, a team. There has to be something deep inside of us as a group that will not allow us to eat our own young. Where was that over the last 18 months? I don't trust myself today to try to address the bigotry and racism element because I'm still trying to keep my alter ego in check because I love my listeners. There are others who I know will do a much better job of addressing that in the coming days. I'm encouraged that Jonathan finally said enough. Think about what it cost him day after day after day for over 18 months to have someone speak such powerful, limited beliefs lies, and hate into his life. For the people who would call him soft or weak, tell me how well you would do with someone, and it was probably several someones, making it their life's work to break you down and tell you that you are nothing. How would you hold up under that pressure? Ask yourself, how much more could Jonathan have accomplished for the team if that distraction wasn't present? And then hush, and let grown folks finish talking. As I think about Jonathan and what his future looks like, I pray for his restoration, his peace, and his health. And I, for one, was delighted to hear that he was in therapy. A trauma of this kind seems to scream out for professional intervention, does it not? And while it flies in the face of some of the stories I remember hearing as I was growing up, that's okay. Because see, I heard a lot when I was growing up, Black people don't go to the psychiatrist. And I thought, really? We don't? Why not? Are our lives so good that we would never need to work on ourselves? I was that precocious child who would ask the question and not accept things from adults blindly. Doesn't mean I was constantly challenging authority because I was not. But if things didn't make sense, I really wanted to understand them. Yep, (laughs) I was that kid. I was sitting in the corner reading quietly, but then out of nowhere, bam, the zinger question. The response to the question I asked about black people addressing mental health was that we would dance out our concerns on Saturday night 
or pray them away on Sunday morning. True story. I heard that a lot of times. Have you ever heard anything similar? I can feel you nodding. I can still remember the stupefied look my mother gave me when I suggested that we take the hospice up on its offer to talk to, with a grief counselor as my grandmother's health was failing. She thought that was ridiculous. Everything about her said she thought that was ridiculous. But she said that while she would never go, I could go and tell her if they said anything useful. <laughs> now I apologize if she's listening and didn't want that told, but it's a little late. But here's the other thing, she was wrong. The grief counselor was brilliant. And the therapist I see every two months right now is brilliant too. And I'm still really black, even though I can't dance. And some folks say I don't sound black. Sound black? Okay, that's another place, another podcast, another time. I'll just stick a pin in that. So you see, Virginia, black people really do see the psychiatrist. And I hope Jonathan's is really good. In the October 29th podcast, I talked about how to stop criticizing yourself and become your own cheerleader, and I meant every word. But the very next step demands that you not allow any person or any institution or anything to become your biggest critic. Yes, that inner critic is dangerous, but so are external critics, and the damage that they can inflict shouldn't be underestimated. How we choose to fight back isn't nearly as important as making a decision to fight back. See, fighting back could look like confronting the bully or making a decision to avoid the bully, involving an authority figure, or removing yourself from the situation. None of these are better than the other. Which tactic you choose will vary based on you, your skills, what the bully's costing you, and how much you have to lose. And if I don't care very much about the group that I'm in and I just want to avoid the bully, there's nothing wrong with that because there was a choice and I pick my battles. Everything can't be a learning opportunity, or we would run around confrontational and exhausted all the time. However, I believe we all have moments. I call them my come to Jesus moments when we declare, oh, hell no. See right there, there's the line. You can come right here, but no further. And then when that happens, you decide how you'll fight. The critical step when criticism is present, whenever your line has been crossed, is for you to decide who you are and who you are becoming and who you will be. You. Yes, I'm talking to you. This is your decision and responsibility. Step into it. In fact, run into its arms. I'm not preaching, but there's a story in the Bible about some of the teachers of the day telling Jesus to instruct his disciples to stop speaking the truth. His response was, if they keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. I hear the rocks crying out, and the truth of who you are should not be silenced. As usual, I'm not going to suggest that you have to tell me the answer to this question, but I'd like to know. Do you have a line that you need to draw? Now that you're starting to deal with your inner critic, is there an external critic or an external situation that you need to decide what your line is? Where is the, okay, this far and no farther point, and then figure out how to deal with that? Are you just mad? I really want to know. Visit the blog, AllegraSinclair.com, and let me know your thoughts on this particular situation or on defending yourself from external critics in general. It's always better to be prepared, and if your moment hasn't come, it will. So now go. Make it a powerful day. Until next time. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review on iTunes. You can find show notes and more great content on the blog at AllegraSinclair.com.